Hello, and welcome to the MCS video on related rates. Many physical and geometric quantities are related by explicit formulas. For example, the area of a circle is related to its radius. This means that if we change the radius of a circle at a given rate, then the area must change as well. Related rates problems are a type of problem encountered in calculus and its applications where the goal is to find the rate of change of a given quantity in terms of related quantities. We're often expected to find the equation that relates the various quantities and then use what we know about differentiation in order to solve for the unknown rate of change. In this video, we'll look at a few examples and discuss some guidelines to tackling related rates problems. Let's start with an example. To get started, let's look at the following example. A spherical ball is being inflated at a rate of 4 centimeters cubed per second. At what rate is the radius increasing when the ball has a radius of 21 centimeters? As we can see in the pictures, as the volume of air in the ball increases, the ball swells and its radius is getting larger. The question we're being asked is, if we know how fast the volume is increasing, how fast must the radius be increasing? To solve this problem, we take advantage of the relationship between the volume of the sphere and its radius. To begin, let's list the known and unknown quantities and label them on a diagram. Let's use V for volume, R for radius, and T for time. We know that dV dt is equal to 4 since the volume is increasing at a rate of 4 centimeters cubed per second. It's the word rate that tells us we're talking about a derivative. We need to find dr dt when r is equal to 21. In order to solve for dr dt, we need to find a relationship between the thing we know, the volume, and the thing we want to find, the radius. Recall that the volume of a sphere is given by v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. In order to find dr dt, we need to differentiate both sides with respect to t. Using chain rule, and recalling that both volume and radius are changing with time, we get the following expression. dv dt is equal to 4 thirds pi times 3r squared dr dt. Simplifying, this gives the expression dv dt is equal to 4 pi r squared dr dt. We now substitute the things we know. We know that dv dt is equal to 4, and we're interested in what is happening when r is 21, so we substitute r equals 21. This gives 4 is equal to 4 pi times 21 squared dr dt. Solving for dr dt gives the following expression. dr dt is 1 over 441 pi. We conclude that the radius is increasing at a rate of 1 over 441 pi centimeters per second. We'll now discuss some guidelines for solving related rates problems. Keep in mind, these are only guidelines, and there can be more than one way to solve a given problem. To get started, identify the known and unknown quantities and, when appropriate, label them on a diagram. Next, clearly identify the question that's to be answered. Then, you should find the equation that relates the known and unknown rates of change. Do not sub in any known quantities yet. Then, differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t. Insert the known quantities. And finally, solve for the unknown rate of change. Let's take a look at the following problem. Helena and Havin are running down perpendicular sidewalks towards the same intersection. Helena is running at a rate of 0.8 meters per second and is 12 meters from the intersection, while Havin is running at a rate of 1.2 meters per second and is 5 meters from the intersection. At what rate is the distance between them decreasing at this moment? As Havin and Helena run towards the intersection, they're getting closer and closer. We're given the speeds that they're running at, and we're asked to find out how the distance between them is changing as they approach the intersection. Keeping in mind our guidelines, let's label a diagram representing this problem. Let's let H be the distance between Helena and the intersection, J be the distance between Havin and the intersection, and s be the distance between Helena and Havin. We are given that dh dt is equal to minus 0.8 and dj dt is equal to minus 1.2. Note that the minus sign comes because the distances are decreasing. Again, it's the word rate that tells us that we're talking about derivatives. 
The problem we're asked is find ds dt when h is equal to 12 and j is equal to 5. To find the s that corresponds to h equals 12 and j equals 5, we use s squared is equal to h squared plus j squared. This comes because in the diagram we see a right triangle and we use Pythagoras' theorem. Subbing in h equals 12 and j equals 5, we can solve for s, and we see that s should be the square root of 169, or equivalently, 13. We now need to find the expression that relates the known and unknown quantities. In fact, we've already used the equation that relates them. We know that s squared is equal to h squared plus j squared. So we differentiate this with respect to t and get the equation 2s ds dt is equal to 2h dh dt plus 2j dj dt. We can now substitute in the known quantities. h is 12, j is 5, s is 13. And we sub in dh dt is minus 0.8, dj dt is minus 1.2. Solving for ds dt gives us minus 19.2 minus 12 over 26. Or, after simplifying, ds dt is minus 1.2. So we conclude that the distance between them is decreasing at a rate of 1.2 meters per second. Having seen some examples and discussed some general guidelines, perhaps now is a good time to pause and make some comments. First, the guidelines we've discussed are just that guidelines. The solutions that we've given are the solutions we've chosen to show, but you may come up with different solutions on your own. The same problem may have several acceptable correct solutions. So if you have something different, that's okay. Second, when we're at the step where we've set up the equation that relates the various quantities, it's often tempting to want to take the known, all the known information, sub it into the equation, and then work with the simplified equation. The problem with that is, when you've done this, you've removed all the variables and the time dependence. This means that when you move to the next step, which is differentiating, you'll be left with the equation 0 equals 0. That seems like an awful lot of work to find out something you already knew. Finally, in the questions that we've seen so far, we've been given all the rates of change that we need with the exception of the one we're solving for. In some problems, there are other quantities that show up and we're not given that information. Let's take a look at an example where we have to do some extra work to find all rates of change. A conical paper cup that is 8 centimeters across and 26 centimeters tall is filled with water. A hole at the bottom of the cup causes water to leak out at a rate of 4 centimeters cubed per second. How quickly is the water level dropping when the water is 11 centimeters deep? As the water drips out the bottom of the cup, the volume of water and the water level are both decreasing. We're told that the volume is changing at a constant given rate, and we're asked to find out the rate at which the water level is dropping at a given point in time. Keeping in mind our guidelines, let's get started by labeling a diagram. Let's use capital V for volume and T for time. Let's use capital R and capital H for the radius and height of the cup. Note that the cup is 8 centimeters across, so capital R is 4. And the cup is 26 centimeters tall, so capital H is 26. Let's use little r and little h for the radius and height of the water. Note capital R and capital H, these are fixed quantities, they don't change with time. But little r and little h are quantities that do change with time. We've been given that dv dt is minus 4. Again, the minus sign comes because the volume is decreasing. The question we've been asked is, find dh dt when h is equal to 11. Now notice at this stage, we see two unknown quantities, little r and little h. We're only asked about one of them. In order to eliminate the extra quantity, the little r, we'll have to take advantage of some geometry. To get started, notice that there's two similar triangles in the diagram. We're going to use these similar triangles to find a relationship between little r and little h. So notice to get started that little r over little h has to be the same as big R over big H. 
subbing in big R is 4, big H is 26, we can now solve for little r in terms of little h. This gives little r is 2 over 13 times little h. We now look for a relationship between the known and unknown quantities. To start, let's look at the equation for the volume of a cone. The volume of water at time t will be given by v equals pi over 3 little r squared times little h. Using the previous expression for little r, we can simplify this expression. We're left with the equation v is 4 pi over 507 times little h cubed. To find dh dt, we'll differentiate the expression v equals 4 pi over 507 little h cubed. Differentiating with respect to t gives dv dt is 12 pi over 507 times h squared dh dt. Subbing in the known quantities, dv dt equals minus 4 and little h equals 11, we get minus 4 is 12 pi over 507 times 11 squared dh dt. We now solve for dh dt. This gives dh dt is minus 169 over 121 pi. We conclude that the water level is dropping at a rate of 169 over 121 pi centimeters per second. In a yard, a prisoner is standing directly below a searchlight that is 30 meters above ground and shining on him. As he begins to run away from it at a speed of 2 meters per second, the light follows him. At what rate is the light rotating when the man is 40 meters away from the base of the pole? So as the prisoner runs away from the light post, the light tracks him. In order for the beam to track his movement, the light must rotate. We know the speed at which the prisoner is running, and we're being asked to find out how fast the light must be rotating at a given point in time in order to track the prisoner's movement. As we've done in previous problems, let's start by labeling a diagram. Let's let y be the distance between the pole and the prisoner. Let's let theta be the angle of the searchlight. And note that the pole is 30 meters tall. We've been given dy dt is equal to 2 since the man is running at a speed of 2 meters per second. The question we're being asked is, find d theta dt when y is equal to 40. We now need to find a relationship between the quantities involved. If we look closely at our picture, we see that we can use some trig to find this relationship. Specifically, we see that tangent of theta should equal y over 30. Rearranging, this tells us that y should equal 30 times tan theta. We can now differentiate this expression with respect to t. We get dy dt is equal to 30 secant squared theta d theta dt. We can now substitute in the known quantities and try to solve for d theta dt. After some rearranging and simplifying, we see that d theta dt should equal 2 times 30 over 50 times 50, or 3 over 125. So we finally conclude that the searchlight is rotating at a rate of 3 over 125 radians per second when the man is 40 meters from the pole. We have now seen some examples and discussed some general guidelines for solving related rates problems. However, there's a wide variety of related rates problems that we haven't discussed. In order to be comfortable and confident solving related rates problems, you're going to need to practice. In order to help, we've set up a few practice problems to get you started. Good luck and thanks for watching.